Welcome to Hope is Here. I am excited this week to have Stephanie Winslow as our guest. Stephanie is an author, speaker, blogger, and the founder of Blind Spot Consultants. Uh, those of you that listen to Hope is Here on a regular basis uh, probably recognize that name because over the past two years, um, she has been a frequent guest on Hope is Here. And Stephanie's burning desire, like mine, is to be an advocate for hope and pointing people towards Jesus. Um, in fact, her website is titled AscentToHope.com, and I would really encourage you to check that out and be encouraged like I have by some of the powerful writings that she posts on her website, on her blog, and once again, that is AscentToHope.com, and we'll have that available on our podcast. Uh, you can check that out later if uh, you're driving and say, hey, I'd like to check it out, but can't write right now while I'm driving, so... One of the reasons that we uh, really like uh, Stephanie as a guest, and I love reading her writings personally on her blog, is that Stephanie's real and very vulnerable. Um, you know, Stephanie, I read your writings and your books, and uh, you share about struggles with life. And uh, recently, your faith uh, got taken to a new level, unfortunately, with the death of your brother, Zach, at the age of 39 a couple months ago. And Uh, I know it's really still raw um, and just still processing all that, but what can you share with us uh, about how you've seen God during this time of grieving? Uh, Wow, yeah, it's been um, a rough couple of months, as you can imagine, but um, at the same time, I've I've seen God in so many different ways. Um, A lot of it has been through people um, and other believers who are carrying his torch on the earth, you know, who are being the hands and feet, Um, people who continue to send text messages and who just surrounded us at the hospital for the weeks that we were there with him. Um, And it, God has been um, incredible also in just that he has given me just what I need for those moments when um, I don't, I feel like I can't move forward or I feel like I'm stuck, um, whether it's through scripture or through, you know, the loving embrace of a friend or um, of my husband, or he's just constantly using his word and using people to help me walk through this, this, uh, these hard weeks and months. Well, that's one of the things that uh, so often people, you know, have asked me, uh, being in ministry now for um, 17 years, you know, what do I do when somebody has a, a death in the family? And, um, you know, maybe it's somebody that's a little more premature than we would like, your brother, 39. And I say, you know, it's not about what you say. It's just having a presence there. And, um, you know, whether it is, like you said, just a hug or maybe just a simple text saying, hey, thinking and praying about uh, for you today. Um, you know, I'm here if you need me. Just something that simple can mean a lot to people during a time of grieving, doesn't it? does yeah and you know often people have asked me what can i do for you what do you need and my response is i don't know (laughs) i don't even know what i need um honestly it just it really is just knowing that people are thinking about me and praying for me and and are willing to just sit and and spend time um that is really has been very healing for me and my spirit Well, I appreciate how you've shared some of those things on your blog at AscentaHope.com. And uh, one of your most recent posts, uh, you shared about the title of the blog post I thought was just powerful because you just laid it out there, Permission to Fall Apart. And you talked about this grieving time in your life, and uh, you shared about a conversation that you had with your friend that day. And... um, can you share with us your response to her question, like a good friend would ask when she said, how are you doing, and uh, kind of how she didn't allow you just to stop there with that kind of trivial answer, but she, she probed a little deeper with two other questions. Yeah, she, um, you know, I was tempted to, to give her the normal answer, I'm like, oh, I'm doing fine, <laughs> um, but she continued to ask me, you know, I said, you know, I think I'm doing well. She's like, well, well, what does well mean? And 
I guess I had never really thought about it, but as I sat there with her and um, started processing through that a little bit, I realized that my measuring stick for well was based on how I was holding myself together. And so if I was able to hold myself together and, and not be crying all day long or, or you know, not be angry or if I was having a, you know, a relatively, quote-unquote, normal day, then that meant I was well. Um, and, yeah, she she didn't hold me or, you know, allow me to stop there. She kept pushing me on and... Um, and I, I, one of the things I said to her was, you know, well, I, I even asked my husband, Marshall, how he thought I was doing, and he th- thinks I'm doing okay. And she was really getting to the heart of my tendency to be a, um, you know, productive and, and to, to check things off of a box and, and to gain approval from other people. And so as long as someone else thought I was doing okay, then that meant I was doing okay. Um and just recognizing that I really thought that it, I, I had to have this perfect little picture um, of what grieving looked like. And it, it was kind of fit into this box of, well, grieving can only look like this and last a, sh- a certain period of time. And like, certainly by now I should be you know, moving forward or whatever, and even those words moving forward are kind of, you know, crazy words to think about in a time like this because you never really move forward. It's just, it's different. Um, So, yeah, it was an interesting conversation for sure. (laughs) Well, I think it's great that your friend was willing, you know, to probe a little deeper because we live in a culture where, you know, things are so superficial and, you know, we people ask, how are we doing? And, you know, most of the time it is just, you know, I'm fine. And Or my dad used to have a famous line. He'd say, people would ask, hey, how you doing, Ed? And he'd say, well, I, I complain, but you'd want equal time. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, so we kind of are hesitant to be real with people, but this was a real friend and yet uh, a real with a capital R, capital E-A-L, um, you know, probed a little deeper and uh, you, like myself, are kind of performance-driven, so I know that you want to grieve as healthy as possible and probably as soon as possible, but uh, with grief, it's just kind of different for everybody, isn't it? It is, yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, the blessing of this friend, and, uh, you know, uh, this really is the importance of having community around you and people who are willing to speak the hard things into your life because, I mean, obviously my heart is hurting and she wasn't saying these things to hurt me, but to really help me grieve, um, really grieve and not move past it. Um, And so when, when she said these words that I have the permission to fall apart, I... I was, like, shocked, kind of stunned, like, what? (laughs) What do you mean I have permission to fall apart? Um, Because I don't, I don't fall apart. I hold things together. (laughs) Like, that's, that's the way I roll. You know, I don't, I don't like to fall apart. And, um, but when she said that, it really um, released in my heart just the opportunity to really, press in to God and say, God, you know, what, what should this season look like for me? And maybe it's that I, you know, I'm not, um, I am not productive right now and that's okay. Um, and maybe that means that the laundry doesn't get done and that's okay. And maybe that means I didn't vacuum this week or, you know, whatever the thing is that makes me feel like I'm holding it together. Maybe those things are okay to let go. Um, and when I was able to, you know, sit with that for a little bit and just spend some time in prayer over that and asking God, you know, what, what does this season look for me? It, it has opened up a whole new door of actually reordering a lot of priorities in my life, um, laying out what is, where am I spending my time and what, what is now, what should be my priority um, after this event occurred, um, 
so it just really does refocus you and your energy but again it's it's hard to to fall apart to allow yourself to fall apart um but it was truly freeing for me well i think that's huge and for somebody listening today uh i want to say to you uh what stephanie's friend so wisely said to her that you know it's okay to have permission to fall apart for you know 30 minutes an hour whatever an afternoon and just cry out to god and let him know how much you're hurting and um when i lost my father it'll be four years in march and uh he was 74 so you know blessed to have him for a long long time versus your brother only 39 and yet uh, i didn't allow myself to grieve uh i was a campus pastor at a church and um also you know my mom wanted to take care of her i have a sister it's a single mom and i just wanted to try to take care of everybody else and part of that as a man and the oldest child uh you know definitely was my responsibility but i didn't really get my self permission to ever kind of grieve much at all much less have just a maybe afternoon or morning or evening to fall apart and uh yet uh, man it's it's therapeutic and uh, god gave us tears to release the pain so it's okay to have a little window to fall apart isn't it stephanie yeah i mean you know just like it says in ecclesiastes there's a time for mourning and um and you know, the, I think the Jewish tradition does a lot much better job of understanding what that looks like. It means for us. You know, they actually take time, um, and there's physical symbols of mourning. You know, tearing their clothes, and and I often wonder how um, how that would be. I guess to live through that um, tradition as well. But um, but yeah, certainly. Um, God has has used, and I, I honestly I can't even fully say that I have actually yet allowed myself to totally just fall apart, um, because it I think it is also a work in progress. Uh, but understanding that the permission is there to do it, and it's okay to fall apart, and um, it, it does give freedom to the process. Well, I do uh, believe with all my heart today that is a word for somebody to hear that's grieving, whether, you know, I found myself at Christmas time having breakfast with my sister, and uh, she and I were really super close to her dad. She was the only girl, three boys and a girl, and uh, definitely a daddy's girl. And, uh, yeah, we started talking, and just out of the blue, when I started talking about my dad, I just started weeping at the table when we were in the restaurant. It was kind of embarrassing, but... Um, I just want to let it roll, let it happen, because uh, I knew that I had not done allowed myself to do that the first year. And so it just whoever's listening today, I just want to allow yourself time to grieve. Uh, if you haven't, uh, man, Christian counselors, a pastor, have been great sources of help to me over the years. I want to encourage you to check them out. But uh, we're going to continue talking with Stephanie tomorrow. If you uh, just tuned in, uh, we were talking with Stephanie Winslow. She is an author. She's a speaker. She's a blogger. She's also the founder of Blind Spot Consultants. I uh, want to encourage you to go check out her website, Ascent to Hope. Dot com, And uh, tomorrow we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk about four things that she uh, has kind of learned through this grieving process, even though she's in the early stage of it uh, with the recent death of her brother. But uh, I hope that you'll join us tomorrow. And then we're also going to talk some about a new devotional study guide book she has out called Ascent to Know Him. So I hope you'll invite a friend to join us and that you'll be with us also as we continue our conversation tomorrow with Stephanie Winslow on Hope Is Here. Are you looking for an upscaled luxury used car? Look no further than Paradise Motorsports. Paradise Motorsports, located in Lexington on East New Circle Road, has quality vehicles at amazing prices. The owner, Rod, and his team will take great care of you. If you want to check out their selection of quality upscale luxury used cars, check them out online at ParadiseInventory.com. That's ParadiseInventory.com.